they're actually looking at pioneering an entirely different way of, of doing protraction therapy. You know, having a, basically a completely separate type of face mask that we've never seen before. I'm not privy to all the details of that, but but again, that's something that excites me. It's you know, this has been face mask therapy has been around for you know probably over a hundred years. I mean, it's been a long, long time that we've been protracting the upper jaw forward, primarily in kids. So you know, they're looking at being able to provide a force system that can do that. You know, definitely in kids and maybe in adults. Uh, in a way that we're not taxing, you know, the chin and the forehead, which is what's typically used for protraction face mask. You know, we don't want the chin to go back. We don't want, the, you know, the force to be put on the jaw. So they're looking at, you know, pioneering new ways to do that as well. And then as Nuaz mentioned uh, last uh, podcast that you did, uh, if you have the ability to apply force from outside the mouth to a system that's inside the mouth, not only can you make that force straightforward to try and bring the jaw straight forward, but if you start to develop any asymmetries due to differential resistance, whatever may cause it, maybe even a fracture, well, now you have a separate force that's not part of that system that can help guide and direct where that expansion is going. And that's exciting. Right. So you're kind of painting the picture of a protraction system that's not just necessarily something to help interiorize the mid face and the, and the palate, but something that can just be used more generally to help balance asymmetries that exist in the expander. Absolutely. Not necessarily in the expander, because if it's planned out right, it shouldn't be there, but in the expansion process. In Meaning the complex. That, yeah, exactly. As, that, as those turns are happening, for whatever reason, it, it's not going the direction we thought it would. What are your thoughts on protraction in general? Have you have you seen the FME proprietary expansion system? Not, not in its entirety. And, and again, I, I don't believe it's out yet in its entirety. So, you know, I've seen little pieces of it and parts of it. And, and, and it's just like you would expect. I mean, it, down to the most minute detail, it looks different than anything I've ever seen. No kidding. You know, up to this point, you know, majority of practitioners doing protraction are going to do the traditional chin, forehead, face mask. Yeah. You know, you might have some doing the bow, which I've done some of those. You might have some doing the crane. Uh, those come with a significant set of, of, of challenges as well for anybody who's done either of those. Yeah, it's funny. In your, in your online course, um, you mentioned the lack of a really solid, stable option for actual face mask devices as being one of the, the problems in the, in the protraction space right now. Right. And you said, hey, if anyone is looking for an entrepreneurial venture, go out and and solve this problem make for a sure. better face mask for sure right and maybe face genix is doing that um are you bullish on face mask the future of face mask in general or do you use it a lot in adult patients what do you what yeah. do you think about so, it so so in in growing patients 100 percent. i mean the, what's the a change... growing patient when does that end that's uh, also a controversial yeah question. yeah so let's just say let's just say up to 16 17 in females and maybe 18 19 in boys oh wow like for sure you know you, you're going to because that growth is happening it, it's not so much just bending a bone like it would be an adult where there's no growth in, in, in an adult bone you have two things one the bone is harder two it's not growing in a growing patient those sutures, all those areas of resistance are active. So they're not just stable, locked together, and that's where they're going to be for the rest of your life kind of thing like an adult. They're active. So when you apply force, it responds in a different way than if you apply force to something that is, you know, rigid and stable like it becomes in adults. Right. And so any growing patient, you, you, you apply enough force for a longer amount of time, you're going to get movement of the jaw to a higher degree than you would in an adult. So the question is, you know, can you take a fully formed adult skeleton that's no longer growing? All the all the physiology of growth is 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 shut down at that point. You just have sutures. You have the interlocking of the bone and and any type of fusion that's there. So essentially, you're asking the top jaw not to grow forward with 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 guided force to help it grow forward. You're asking it to bend forward. And so, how much can that upper jaw bend forward? That's left to be uh, determined. So far, I have not seen it. And I've had patients who want to try face masks and I, I let them try it. I mean, there's nothing, uh, in my opinion, that's that's super dangerous or risky about it. Uh, it's just that it may not work. As long as it's attached to your anchorage and your anchorage is solid in the bone, then you're not going to have problems in doing it. But how much do you wear it? How much force do you apply? And how much actual movement does that cause above and beyond just the mechanical movement of the jaw due to the expander? 